Welcome to Isha Gaming. Today it is time to talk about the RPGs that you can find on the Nintendo Switch. These are our top 10 RPGs found on the system with a tiny bit of a twist to the mix. I am together with the Eric Landon RPG in this video and I will present 5 games and he will present 5 games. These games are not in a specific order necessarily, but I know for a fact that you will find your next game in this video. Your next purchase, your next obsession, because we have been truly obsessed with all of these games. As for my five choices, I'm going to avoid stating the obvious Skyrim and Zelda, and if it counts as an RPG, even Dragon Quest Builders 2. So this list will be a tiny bit different. I'm just gonna not include the obvious ones. Because you've heard about the obvious ones a thousand times. I want you to find your next RPG game on the Switch in this video. And it would be cool if you had never heard about the game. I also actually consider Immortals Phoenix Rising and Astral Chain to be very must plays. But anyways, my first game is actually Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, which is the first Xenoblade that I ever played way back on the Wii. It has been remade on the 3DS and now on the Switch. I consider the Switch version to be the absolute and definitive edition of the game, the best way and the best place to play this game. It has a sprawling and unique game world set on top of giants in a story concept unlike anything I have ever seen or played. You take control of several party members, explore huge areas, do a ton of side quests and progress and level up your characters. This game is legit fun and addicting. I'm very fond of the game. Very super fond of this game. In my opinion, it has all the RPG elements that I am looking for. Day and night cycle, super big elite enemies roaming about, collectible things everywhere, happy colors, not even to mention awesome voice acting and music. The music is so iconic. I would buy and force this game upon anyone. If you are unsure whether to buy this game or not, I do have a more in-depth review on it here on my channel for you to check out. Because it is good. You must play it. Now over to Eric Landon, a guest on my channel today. Hey Yircha, thanks for having me on. So the first game I want to talk about is Fire Emblem Three Houses, very popular game. I'm such a die-hard Fire Emblem fan, so of course a game of the franchise needed to be here. Now this game plays very differently from the usual older Fire Emblem games. It's very modern and it includes three different routes between three playable protagonists. You choose a house, you choose a protagonist, and off you go. But of course you create your own customizable character, which is going to be the teacher and it's going to be teaching at this school for the first arc of the game, then the, the game will jump into the second arc, but that's a spoiler. All you need to know is that several years passed between the school simulation and then the actual war. Now, each of the three houses has its own different characters, most of them being pretty much retainers to the protagonist of each house. And you can also recruit most of these characters if you are in a different house. And then you can also bond with these characters in certain events. You can invite them to eat or to cook or to a tea party. Yeah, all right, that doesn't sound very Fire Emblem-ish. That's exactly why I said at the beginning it's very different. I don't feel this game is a true Fire Emblem. It's something else anymore. But it's still an amazing game and it's very, very recommended. Because after all, the battle system is still... Classic Fire Emblem, played on grids, your characters move in these squares, like always, each of your characters can go solo or they can command like a small platoon of soldiers that can help you in battle. Overall, this is a great game, very recommended. If you're an old school Fire Emblem fan, I suggest you play this game with an open mind. Just keep in mind that it's not, it doesn't really feel like an old, old school true Fire Emblem game, but it's an amazing game nonetheless. I am actually not sure enough people has played this game yet, so that is why I'm going to try and push it on to you, even today, because I definitely want to continue to recommend this game for newcomers, at least that you guys look into it. And that is Atelier Risa 2. I know I have talked about this game several times, but there are still people that are on the verge of buying a 
Atelier game. Smaller series. I get that. And it is scary to buy games from a series that you know nothing from. By first glance you will see that it is an anime style game where you play as a girl, but in reality it is a fully realized and complex RPG title with all the RPG mechanics that I am sure you are looking for and then some. Tons of areas to explore, a diverse cast of party members, again tons of quests to complete and tons of things to collect and progress in. This is actually a big gaming series and you can trust me when I say that I feel like Atelier Risa 2 is the best place to start. It is the most recent Atelier game and it is also the best one. It is very addicting, at least it was for me. I still go back to it. And yes, I also made a review of this game. Also did a review of that. All right, the next game I want to talk about is one that is very famous and also very infamous at the same time for being very, very challenging, and that is Octopath Traveler. Inspired by Square Enix's own saga games, this is a game where you choose between eight different protagonists, each with their own story and chapters. You can choose one of these protagonists, but you can recruit every single other main character, although the story will focus on your main character, unless you want to do each and every single one of these other characters' as chapters, which is strongly recommended, you know, to reduce the grinding you'll have to do in this game, because by going through their different chapters you can gain experience, especially by defeating the bosses. Now it's a regular turn-based RPG where you uh, explode the enemy's weaknesses uh, with different elements, each one has a different weakness to a certain weapon, or a specific weapon, or a specific element, and you can actually change every character's job uh, later in the game, so they can learn more skills and different skills and different abilities and different types of weapons. Don't miss out on this game because it has such a great, very well, deep, tragic written story, a very dark and very well written story, and it's worth playing if only for the story and of course those beautiful graphics that have become so influential nowadays, right? Okay, so for my next game, I have to say, even though Skyrim and Zelda and even Dragon Quest Builders 2 should have definitely been on this list, I feel like I wanted to highlight some lesser known games today. Because let's be real, Skyrim and Zelda has been already thoroughly talked about on my channel. So my next pick is therefore a lesser known title again that I still consider to deserve way more attention than I feel like it has gotten. It is called Oninaki and it is more of a top-down action RPG filled with RPG elements nonetheless and a strong story. Really deep and dark. The thing with Oninaki, for me anyway, was simply the high fun factor when playing it. Combat is legit fun with switching in and out to different kinds of demons, changing up the entire gameplay style using a ton of fun skills and hacking and slashing away with great graphics, incredibly satisfying sound effects and good music. I just truly like this game. The colors used in the game, they're pure eye candy. This was a game that really impressed me and had me hooked from start to finish. Also did a review of that. Put this game on your wish list. Check it out. I enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit like on it because that helps my algorithm. You can also hit like on TV. Did you know that? Okay, so Eric Landon's this next game. Okay guys, my next game is another strategy RPG, but one that is very different. It's called Valkyria Chronicles 4. Why 4? Do you need to play the others to understand this one? Not really, they're all connected and take place in the same universe and they're like prequels and sequels to one another. You don't need to play the others to understand this one, although it's good to know and it's important to know that the first game released originally on the PS3 has a digital remaster also on the Switch and it's another masterpiece I think you should play. But I want to focus on the fourth game in the series because it didn't get a lot of attention and it also didn't get a lot of great reviews out there just because in terms of graphics and gameplay it plays almost exactly the same as the first game which actually it's not a bad thing at all but you know people right they always want something new and when they get something new they complain because it's not like the previous games who gets these people nowadays man 
in Valkyria Chronicles 4 you follow the very same war that's been taking place since the first Valkyria Chronicles game, but in a different part of the world, with different characters and a different platoon, now led by Cloth Wallace, the main character. So they put this guy in charge of a whole new battalion, a squad, that will be sent into different missions to participate in this war and to uncover the mysteries behind the powerful Valkyria, which is a magical, extremely powerful being that's pretty much on the enemy side, unfortunately for them. But the thing is that there's a lot of characters to recruit, a lot of characters that have their own subplots, their own little side quests where you can get to know, know them better, and there's also a wide variety of weapons and a wide variety of classes. But the battle system is not grid-based like in the Fire Emblem games or Final Fantasy Tactics. You actually go in these kind of real-time strategy moves where you have one character, each with their own turn, and during that turn you have like a, a short amount of... well, not amount, more like a limited area. Each one, each different class has like a wider range. The scouts have a long range. Uh, the lancers have like um, the ones that with the rocket launchers have like like less, you know, uh, movement range and so on. So you obviously need to strategize between these carefully and masterfully designed maps with your characters. You need to know which characters you're gonna take, which classes are better for this map or for these types of enemies and so on. Valkyria Chronicles, all games take influence from the XCOM series. So if you're familiar with the XCOM series, you're probably gonna love these games. And I strongly recommend Valkyria Chronicles 4. Give it a chance, ignore the reviews. It's a masterpiece and a must play also on the Nintendo Switch. Okay, so I'm putting another somewhat underrated game on my next uh, game of the video. And this one is good. It is a pure RPG in all aspects. It was super ambitious for its time. Fun world, lore, graphics that I like, and a gameplay style that I love. A game that truly impressed me, and it came out of nowhere for me. I was surprised that I had never played it before, so to me it seems like the typical title that can pass you by, so that is why I want to highlight this game. Because it passed me by, and I was surprised that I had never played it, never heard of it. But it's actually an older game, just remastered a tiny bit for the Switch right now, and all the consoles also. Consoles also. So, I'm talking about Kingdoms of Amalur. And with what I said in mind, I don't want anyone to miss out on this, especially not if you are a fan of games like Elder Scrolls or even World of Warcraft or other high fantasy setting RPGs. Again, tons of quests and things to do in a huge awesome world. Check it out. Eric, you're up. The next game I want to talk about needs no introduction. It's called Dragon Quest XI. This is the definitive edition. It includes uh, certain modes like the, the ability to switch between uh, the 8-bit retro style look and the modern look, which is the, uh, the, the original graphics the game, the game used for this particular release. I think at this point everybody knows this game, it's pretty popular, it's pretty famous, and if people keep telling you to play it, it's because they are right. I agree with them, it's a masterpiece, an excellent game, and also an excellent introduction to the Dragon Quest series, because previous games used to be marvelous, don't take me wrong, but they were kind of hard and kind of cryptic at the same time, and very, very grindy. This one is perfectly balanced, it isn't easy, but it isn't that hard either, it's challenging, but to an extent, it's perfect for beginners, and no wonder people are loving this game so much, because it's just amazing. And the best thing of it all is that it's also turn-based, which means not everything Square Enix, like Octopath Traveler, for example, is action RPG. That's just Final Fantasy. Thank goodness Dragon Quest XI is just turn-based. An amazing game, and you already know you need to play it. My last game for this list is Ni no Kuni. And yeah, I may be realized by now that you have heard about it, you have played it already. Maybe even most people that watch my channel has seen this game and played it by now. But I still want the few people that haven't checked this game out yet to check it out now. It truly, honestly, still is unique and damn incredible and cozy. The game does most things perfectly, from world building, storytelling, gameplay loop, and collectibles that are super satisfying to engage in. It is such a great game for escaping reality for a bit, and it is perfect to play on the Switch. Ni no Kuni, everyone. Also did a review of that.
Last but not least, I want to talk about a game that I recently finished on the Switch. It's also on the PS4, and yes, the PS4 version is graphically superior. This is the choppy version, but it's perfectly playable, and you can play it no problem and have a hell of a lot of fun like I did. East 9, Monstrum Nox. And you're probably wondering, why not East 8? It's also on the Switch. Yes, it is, but Ircho only told me to choose 5, and if I had to choose between those two... I can't decide, play them both! Honorable mention, East 8 Lacrimosa of Dana, another amazing game! Now, this game, I'm talking very passionately because I absolutely love it to pieces. Excellent action RPG. Uh, you don't need to play the others to understand this one. Sure, they're all connected. They follow the adventures of Adult Christine, this redhead uh, protagonist that's in almost every single one of the East games. And they all follow his adventures, which means they're all connected, they're all sequels and prequels to one another. This, in chronological order, is the very last game, the most recent, for so to say. Uh, well, Adol arrives uh, with his friend Doggy uh, to a uh, prison city, and then he gets arrested. So your goal will be to exit the prison and go undercover, you know, with other characters, because apparently Adol has acquired this new power uh, called the Monstrum, and these other characters also have the same powers, so they get dragged into this... Not exactly a war, but a conflict between the oppressed citizens and the knights which work for the Roman Empire controlling the city with the prison, as a matter of fact. I don't want to spoil too much of the game. Play it. It plays masterfully. It's great. The controls are superb. Sure, there's a few frame drops here and there, a few glitches, maybe just one and two, but, you know, nothing that can actually ruin the experience for you. If you can't get a hold of the PS4 version, this excellent choice on the Switch is a no-brainer. Give it a try if you can, I strongly, strongly recommend it. Thank you for having me on, it was a great pleasure. I hope people get to play these games that I recommended because they're such amazing titles. All right, thanks again and see you next time. East 9 is actually a game that I want to play because I played and enjoyed East 8, but I haven't gotten around to pick up East 9 yet. Thank you Eric Landon RPG for collabing with me in this video. Now I want all of my followers to go over to his channel and check out what he does. He posts a lot of videos. Subscribe to him and like what he posts. If you are new to my channel on the other hand, hello, please subscribe to this channel. And to everyone that are subscribed, actually I want you to put on notification because I can see how many people that are subscribed that hasn't put on notification and I was like, eh, I need to mention that in my next video, maybe. So uh, I'm mentioning that now, put a notification because it's good. I don't know what I was going to say there, but... Anyways, click the info card in the corner for all the reviews of the games that I talked about and check out Eric Landon. Now, thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Woo! Okay. Okay, bye! Drink, we're still living.